Yo, what's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know who it is. This is Kevin from the Code Progression Podcast, brought to you by MSOTD Rocks. We're rocking metal thrive. And do I have a very, very, very special episode for you guys today? This one I'm super excited about because I get to interview someone who, after their new record came out on August 21st, 2020, I got to listen. I was like, ooh, there's a lot more going on here than I could have expected or anticipated. There is there it's deep, it's raw, it's emotional, it's beautiful. So let's see if we can talk to him. And I had some message going on and bing bang boom, here they are. So I got to talk with the lead vocalist for the band Kill the Lights, James Clark. And we really went in deep with the process for creating their album The Sinner, and also talked about just what it's like kind of promoting an album around this time of 2020 and really getting in deep with also the theme of the album with it being a lot more emotional about mental health, about what he had gone through and just really how this all came out and how this turned into such a dynamic and diverse album. So please welcome from Kill the Lights, James Clark. Are you guys ready? Because I am super excited for you guys to hear this one. So let's go. Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, another very special episode for you today as this band came out with a brand new album on August 21st, and it was very highly anticipated due to the grouping of guys that are here, and I have the lead vocalist and, I gotta say this, fellow University of Minnesota graduate along with myself, so please welcome James Clark. So James, welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. Thanks, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. How's everything going over in... I think you said you are around the Minnesota Wisconsin border area right I'm now. Right on the this border, crisis. yeah. So it's we've just debating that, right? So uh, I'm I'm a Vikings fan living in the cheesehead world of uh, Packers, surrounded by it. But uh, yeah, so I'm just across the border in Wisconsin, but uh, the, the true roots are in the Minnesota Vikings. So see, I'm kind of the same thing, except on the other end of the state because I'm all the way I'm on the Lake Michigan yep. side here in Milwaukee. Yep. Yep. Well, normally I have people do their, like, give, like, a whole big old introduction, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people know exactly who you are, especially with Kill the Lights and with everything that's gone on around that band since you guys got together and with the hype that was around the center as well, because I was talking to people on Wednesday about this on a live stream, and everyone's like, wait, you, you got James Clark? I'm like, yeah, at least I hope he's the one that comes on, because either you or, uh, I think it was uh, Travis that was going to come on, it was yeah. one of the two, so I was yeah. like, I hope I get James. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, it's been awesome. It's been an awesome journey so far. I mean, you know, like my, my history is I, I kind of rooted in uh, f- uh, 14 years old when I first first played my uh, first show in England. Grew up in England, but then moved to Minnesota for kind of college. And then, uh, you know, so I've been a part of the music scene in Minnesota for the last way too long, to be honest, is the answer to that one. So, uh, yeah, you know, I've evolved through things. St- Put it this way: I started off in a rap rock band. That's 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 how <laughs> how interesting this gets. Uh, then I went into kind of a punk band, and into the Throw the Fight, and then obviously now Kill the Lights. So yeah, and then with Kill Lights, because you guys, I think it was you formed right at the beginning of 2019, thanks to Michael Moose Thomas, former drummer from Bull from My Valentine, who's he was the kind of the catalyst of getting this all together. Yeah, so we, we, it's even before that. I mean, we, it's like it was two two and a half years in the in the in the makings. You know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, the, so, so, you know, the backstory to that is that um, uh, my former band toured with Bullet My Valentine back in 2013. Um, and so I'd always kept in contact and actually went, obviously my family are uh, in England. And uh, so uh, Christmas, when I go back, you know, there was a couple of times I went up to Wales and hung out with the Bullet guys and Moose. So we kind of kept in contact and, and uh, he randomly posted something on Facebook one day was like, hey, does anybody know any good singers? And I, you know, that time I didn't really know that he wasn't in Bullet and all those good things. And uh, so I, I'm like, you know, I'll just send him a message. And I just said, hey, is it is this for like a buddy's band or something? He's like, no, I'm actually starting a new project separately, you know? And I'm like, oh, he's like, you want to throw some vocals down? So uh, I went in with my buddy Ian and um, just demoed up a couple songs and uh, the first one I actually demo was uh, was the uh, the song The Faceless, which actually made the record. So uh, that barely changed. That was the first. It was funny because I asked him, hey, what, what, what kind of vocal style you're looking for? He's like, I think he said, heavy and catchy. I'm like, well, that couldn't be more vague. I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. So and, and it's great. You know, I like it. The, the best thing about it was there was no like, hey, we kind of we're going for this kind of style or we're trying to achieve this certain thing. Uh, 
you know, uh, basically the, the, all the guys coming from the different bands have been in, uh, we create, we created what was our own organic sound. There was no like trying to fit a certain mold. And, uh, I think kind of the, the record reflects that. Yeah. And when I went through the record as well, I thought it really reflected that as well, because not every single song had this like certain same feel to it, where especially with four different guys coming from four different bands and with four different styles as well, completely. And many different influences from that, of course, you're going to be able to experiment with so many different things. So you're going to be able to try and find, okay, maybe on this song, we're going to go with a little bit more of a hard sound, maybe a little bit more of a fast pace, play a little bit more of a metalcore style to it. Then on a separate song, kind of focus more on something like what, I kind of like that bowl for my Valentine feel where it has more of that like heavier style, but also kind of that emo feel to it at the same time. Actually, as well. I've never, never heard of that band before. So I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you, when you get the bullet reference, right, here's the thing. Like uh, what's interesting is Moose is was bullet, right? And the, the drums were Moose. So you all like, when you hear some of that stuff, it's his drumming that did it. And he has a very specific style, you know? So uh, of course, you're going to draw some of that, uh, some of that influence in it. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like I said, I think what we've done is it, uh, I feel like it's a really nice balance, right? And it kind of, if you listen to the album all the way through this, it, it takes you on a bit of a journey. And it's a really nice blend of, uh, you know, I think when people have been asking me, I think it's a really nice blend of uh, some throwback kind of thrashy uh, old school metal vibes along with some of that 2000 style vibe uh along with uh obviously a, a more modern twist on that and i think that really captures and you know you, uh, the great thing is we've been uh the feedback we've been getting is people have been missing those sounds you know there's a lot of very, it's a very current kind of sound out right now with a specific tuning and different styles and and, and uh with you bring me the rise and something else too which is which is awesome i love that band but there's also a, there's been a big gap of uh and a big a missing piece for some of the that, that style that was around the throwback stuff, but also the 2000 stuff, uh, the kind of metalcore stuff that um, people still love and play, and, and there hasn't been anybody to fill that gap. So I think we've kind of done a decent job of doing that. Yeah, because even with the metalcore stuff, because that was something I really started to get into at the beginning of last year, and I've really dove deep into it, especially with like albums. a lot of albums that came out last year, like uh, Motions and White put out an album last year, so I kind of had that more of like that gothic metalcore style. Yep. Kill Switch Engage and Bring Me the Rides came out that record last year. I was not a big fan of it at all, but what they've done with a couple singles pr- uh, since then, yep. I've been bigger fans of that, but then again, that's all on personal taste. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Uh, bands like Polaris, I thought they put out a kick-ass yep. record. Trivium, uh, yep. August Burns Red, so there's always these different kind of styles, but like, I know what you're talking about where you're talking about kind of having this certain vibe, the certain feel like you're kind of going back to like a little bit more of those earlier days of metal core, like in the early two thousands, like that feeling that you got with like early bring the rise and earlier kill switch engage earlier, uh, as I lay dying, yep. like there's some yep. kind of feel that is a little bit missing there, but you're bring- and you're sort of bringing it back, but you're not bringing it back. Like, okay, this is just what we're going with. It's like, you're going to put a modern twist on it, but there's also so much more on this record than just that sound. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like I say, you, you go to some of the kind of ballad-esque style things, too, that still fit the mold and still got a, like a heavier parts within that. So um, for me, for, for us, we wanted, to, we wanted to explore kind of, uh, we didn't want to have the same song 12 times on a record. We want to explore just the, the, we had no pressure on us, you know, uh, to, to, as to how we should write from a label or anything else, too. Um, and it was just nice to go in the studio and, and write stuff that we were enjoying writing. You know, it's like, it was, it was very organic. And I think fans are pretty, pretty good at seeing through bullshit when bands are contrived or putting stuff together. That's not them or they're trying too hard to be like somebody else. We weren't doing that. We were writing songs because we liked it and, and uh, trying to morph a record out of that. So. So definitely coming from the fans perspective, I can totally agree with that one. You can easily tell where all of a sudden it's like maybe a label record company is kind of pushing a certain sound on a band. And I've talked with bands beforehand as well that are more up and coming as well, where they've dealt with that as as well. Like I had a band that was on a couple, about like two weeks ago where their whole entire thing was more of like that. It was like a rap rock style, but it was like a spoken word instead of like a, like an actual rap. So it kind of had more of a poetic vibe to it. And the label that they were with originally wanted them to switch to emo rap and wanted them to forget everything they ever had. And they basically just said, yeah, we're not going to do that. So they dropped that label and f- went with somebody else that actually supported what they were doing. Yeah, we had no, we have had no, uh, now, you know, obviously the, the label listens to our music and, and uh, they have the other songs they like and uh, they give feedback, but there, there, there was not one piece of you should or should not do this. This is what we want. Uh, we obviously recorded the record previous to, to signing with, with Fearless 
And uh, we, we chose to do that specifically to control everything. And uh, they loved the vision we were doing. We loved the vision that they were trying to create with, you know, with what we had going on. Uh, the great thing about Fearless Records, too, is the fact that they have a pretty diverse mix of bands on it. Um, you know, so it's not like it's all metal bands. You get a super wide range of bands that they get and have pushed and have, have, have managed to achieve a certain level of success. So uh, it's only been really positive from from those guys from day one. So yeah, I think definitely going with Fearless is a is a huge uh, what's the correct word? Like a huge like little like chip like chip on your shoulder as well, just due to the fact that they're letting you have this complete creative freedom and they're really kind of saying standoffish in terms of trying to okay, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. No, they're not saying any of that. They're just saying, you guys do you. We're going to trust in what you have and we're going to get behind it 100%. Yep. Yeah, it's been great. Only positive things to say. And that that's easily the way to go about it. And I got to ask a question about the right, like how it came to, to writing this album, just because again, you've got four guys told that are from four completely different bands that are coming together to for, to work on this. And were, were there ever any times where all of a sudden, like you guys were bringing up so many, especially with how different some of these songs are, bringing up different ideals and it was just okay we're gonna tr maybe try this maybe try something like this was it just something that came completely organic where you guys were writing it or was it somewhere someone had an idea and you guys just focused on that idea yeah so jordan, jordan was is kind of a uh riff meister of writing um he uh so getting back to it obviously initially initially um initially um uh moose i think it drank one or three bottles of wine uh one <laughs> night and text jordan he'll admit to that uh text jordan hey have you got any music i can jam to so jordan again as as a uh as a long long time uh guy that just demos ideas all the time you know he had he had some stuff in reserve and just a bunch of stuff ready to go and so they just started kind of put, putting stuff together and uh, you know i came along later on in that process so they'd already had 10 12 songs uh scratch ideas that it kind of put together and then from there you know again I, the, the nice thing about 2020 if there is anything nice about 2020 i think we'd all agree about that is that uh uh is that you know uh people now can have be in a three different states and different countries and, and write music and put it all together you know so uh we i have a home studio i can track some of my stuff but generally go with my buddy ian and then moose has the same scenario and same with jordan so generally what we do is we'd be firing ideas around together and sharing them and we'd each add our parts to it and we kind of go from there so uh, we, we had uh, uh, two or three different writing sessions where we flew out to Michigan and did some sessions where we wrote four or five of the songs for the record as well. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, so it really kind of came together that we managed to kind of create this album uh, through you know, three or four different uh, four or five day writing sessions and then just, you know, sharing of sharing of uh, uh, demos, you know. Uh, Travis came along, we, we basically started working with Colin Richardson and Colin produced obviously all the early Bullet stuff. Uh, he obviously did a bunch of the Trivium stuff, Machine Head, you know, all, a lot of the classic stuff. And uh, Colin was on board from get, the get-go too, um, along with Chris Clancy, who was the engineer. And so we kind of started mapping out, pre-producing that stuff. And um, that's when Travis kind of came along. We, we fired him a couple of tracks and he had about three or four different solos finished in two days, which were awesome. So, uh, you know, the first time we, we actually really hung out with him, we were actually in the studio to record the album, which is kind of crazy. But um it was it turned out great you know the best thing about it was it was just there was no agenda there's no pressure there was no uh nobody pushing for a specific thing um and it was just a fun experience and that's the way it should be too because when you do have that pressure it's like okay you have to meet a certain deadline push it out there you're gonna end up potentially creating some songs that necessarily don't capture exactly what you want to at that moment but if you really take the time you don't have that deadline you don't have that pressure and the inspiration comes around you you're gonna end up creating some tracks that really have this more complex sound this more deeper meaning style that when people really start to listen to them it's like every time you listen to it there's gonna be something new that you have to unpack there that you're really gonna get to go into and when i was going through some of these songs and really doing a deep dive into them I was really noticing that it was like every time I listen to something, listen to a certain part, listen to a verse, listen to a pre-chorus, chorus, listen to a bridge and just seeing how every part connected. I, it was just every time I listened to it, I found something new and it was incredible to really go through that. Yeah. Again, I think when you get back to like, I'm not, we weren't, I think if you write music for yourself that you enjoy and you would listen to and you're true to yourself, um, the, the people that got people that fans are going to appreciate that. Right. If, if you're worrying about, 
who who your specific demographic is specifically going to listen to it for a specific reason you're doing it for the wrong reason you're trying to write for somebody specific other than yourself whatever comes from the heart you know whether it's lyrically or musically uh you know if you do it organically and 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 it's literally how you want to do it uh the fans are either going to like it or hate it but at least it's, it was it's true to yourself right and i think that's what we did like we we had no preconceived notion of who who were like specifically aiming it for, you know, it wasn't like, well, we kind of need to aim to that, uh, for that, to that uh, 16 to 24 uh, emo kid market there. It's uh, <laughs> not what we're doing. Like, you know, if, if those kids love it, awesome, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, we just got a bunch of guys coming together to, to write some fun music. And if people love it too, great. I mean, as we talked about, like people are so uh, savvy and, you know, critical these days, all, all, all stuff that's, that's contrived. So uh, I think, you know, uh, for me specifically, I was probably the most honest I've ever been on a record lyrically. I've probably been struggling the most also with mental health things and just with anxiety and depression that I, I've never, re never really shared on any other records. And um, it was the hardest. An example is I, I, uh, I had to do a talk through of each of the songs about uh, two weeks ago and film that and it was my wife asking me the questions about each of the songs and to talk through the the, the meaning behind each of the lyrical uh the content on the lyrical content on each of the songs and and i hadn't I hadn't at that point had to go through each song collectively all together and talk about what i was dealing with and i'm facing my wife talking about thoughts of suicide and thoughts of anxiety and depression and and to be honest it was pretty freaking difficult and like almost overwhelming to have to do it because i'm like i'm having to face my best friend and wife and, and talk about things that i probably haven't always shared with her but i'm sharing with people on an album which is kind of crazy you know but when you had to when i had to face it it's a little more difficult you know <laughs> i'm not much of an emotional guy so it was weird for me to have to face some of those things and i'm, I'm really good at burying things um and, and as a lot of guys are we just don't deal with it just move on but uh, yeah, I just I just felt like, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't the two years, two and a half years of this, you know, it took a long while to negotiate a contract and then COVID comes in and all of these things we got going on. Like, as you say, like, I mean, you've got uh, you've got 2020 just being a shit show, to be honest. Right. Uh, it, it's been a nightmare. And uh, for a new band to come out, it's it's, it's been very hard. But at the same time. Uh, I think just some of the, the subject matter we've dealt with and talked about on the records is, is, has been helpful, right? So you talk about through the night and um, uh, a couple of tracks like that, that people are just relating to, cause I'm just being honest about my struggles. And that's really what it comes down to. And we, we all go through it. I think hopefully uh, people are uh, able to talk more about mental health uh, now and moving forward, but it, it's been a battle and I don't think it's talked about enough to be honest. No, it isn't. And it's not talked about honestly enough as well. And when I listen to music and when people really dive deep into their own personal thoughts and feelings and whether it might be their own personal demons or stuff that you went through affecting your mental health, if you talk openly and honest about it in your music, one thing I've seen this is, and I can, I can attest this because as a, as a huge fan of a lot of this kind of music, I can, like, I felt this as well, where if you're speaking honestly through your lyrics and you're really diving deep in there, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to create a sound. You're going to create a song that when people are trying to explain certain feelings and certain emotions that they were going through at that time. And they're like, well, we can't necessarily put them out there because it's hard to try and describe it. And we don't know exactly how to describe it. You can listen to a song and now you're giving a tangible, a tangible explanation to a certain feeling that you couldn't really explain before. And they may have not gone through the same things that you did as well, but there's going to be parallels with what they went through. And they're going to be able to match that emotion, match that kind of feeling that they had when they went through that. And there's going to be a connection that just grows between your music and with the fans as well. And one song in particular for, for my aspect was the song tear me apart because when I really dove deep into it, a lot of the feelings and a lot of the emotions that were put into that song reminded me of what I went through in the second half of 2017 and early 2018 when everything seemed so good and all of a sudden everything came crashing down around me and I get, went through a sh shit ton of depression, multiple suicide attempts at the same time as well. And it's just really diving deep into Tear Me Apart and just seeing all the emotion that played out in that song with how the instrumentals work, with how with what your vocals and how you were speaking. 
my god it just like that was also that was one of the few songs that i've been able to find that gave a tangible explanation a tangible feeling to that whole entire experience because when i talk about it it's a little bit easier because i've done it a good amount of times but that first time i mean like you said like you were, when you went through all these songs and you went through them with your wife it was like it can't be easy because you're facing all these things and now you're talking to them talking through them to the person you care about the most yeah it's it yeah it's it's, it's crazy but you know, I, I was having an interview with a with a, a big Italian magazine la- last week, right? And uh, what's what's I think if he asked me what if I had one thing come of this, you know, what would what level of what would I consider a level of success? Success to me is if if I can, and it sounds silly, but to me it's important. It's way more important for me to have people helped or figure out some emotional situation or. To, to give them a place of uh, a place of solitude through music or whether it's a sense of community or something, right. That, you know, our fans are on, are online chatting. And like, if you look at the through the night video on YouTube, there was people saying, Hey, I don't know you, but I care about you. If anybody wants to chat, reach out to me. You know, that is that, that, that to me is a level of success. And I, like if, if, um, if, Tickets are sold and records are sold and all that. Awesome. But primarily, it, it, if it's because my main aim will be because people are relating to the music and relating to the songs and the emotional uh, kind of feelings that come with that, that is that that's success to me, right? If I helped, if I helped 10 people out and, and, and turn their shit around and, and they maybe can reach out and get help that they probably wouldn't have done it before because guess what? I'm flawed. Everybody's flawed. We're, we're, we're like, there's this big perception about like, this whole rock star crap. Like I'm equally as weak as everybody else and I have the exact same issues, probably worse. Right. So, uh, uh, if, if I can share that and be a bit transparent that like I deal with you the same shit you're dealing with, we're all the same. And again, the, the, the album is called the center. It's called the center because we all sin and, and we're it re- really, we're all the same. Right. We all make mistakes. We're all going to continue to make mistakes. It's how you deal with that and how you move on from it. Um, so yeah, for me, uh, it, I'm just excited about the connection, not only in the US, but in, in Europe and UK and Australia and, and just this network and, and sense of community that like when, when I grew up, uh, I really felt like there was a brilliant sense of metal community. And you go to shows and this still is now, but it's just, this, you know, everybody's in there to lift everybody up and help each other out. And you see the same faces, the same shows. And I, I, I want to get back to that. I want to get back to that sense of metal community where, uh, in a world of 2020 and 20, <laughs> there couldn't be any more shit that we get back to that, that touring uh, lifestyle and, and to that sense of shows where we can all, we can all move on from this and, and uh, just, you know, build a community. So easily. Like, I mean, from, from the other perspective, like I'm missing shows as well due to the fact that when, when I would go there, it's, I would, especially here in Milwaukee, going to the rave, I would always see so many people at so many of the same shows. And there was a string in 2019 where I went to a show like each and every week at, at that venue where it was, didn't matter who it was. Like I was there for something. I was there for Guar. I was there for After the Barrel. I was there for Most Swipe. I was there for Ice Nine Kills. I was there for Devil Wears Prada. And it was just, I would always see the same group of people all the time. And we were all around the pit. And of course, once everything gets going, you know, almost all of us jump in the pit and have a great time. But there's a whole sense of community where we all come from so many different places. We all come from so many different backgrounds. We all experience so many different things. But once the music starts, once they're all packed in those those ballrooms or those little concert halls together, or whether it's massive arenas, doesn't matter where it is, when we're all packed in there and the music starts playing, everyone can everyone has this similarity where you're connected where everyone's connected with the music in their own way, but you're all connecting with the music in some way. So when everything's happening at the shows, I mean yeah, I've gotten beat up in mosh pits beforehand too. I've gotten almost broke my nose. I've gotten a couple cuts above my eyes. It's happened, but it's always, you know, you get knocked down. There's like three or four people trying to pick you back up and get you going. And at the end of the songs, like everyone's like high fiving and hugging each other just because everyone's like, man, we, we, we did it on that one. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's funny. I was, I was chatting with Travis, a guitarist a little while ago. And we were talking about after the burial and, uh, I actually tried out, but after I was supposed to try out but after the burial, probably, I think it's going back to like, I can't, even, I can't even remember that conception, but it might've been like 2002 or something. And uh, they sent me a song to do it and I couldn't make the, the, the tryout. And so the other guy got the gig. 
this is going way, way back. So it's just funny how this is all part of a big circle of, you know, you talk about Moose and me touring with Bullet and how this all is all in, crazily interconnected, right? Um, Jordan talked with Moose. Travis knew Chris from, uh, from touring with him, uh, the engineer. You know, it's, 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 it's crazy how it's networked. And, you know, I feel I'm feel super lucky, lucky to be playing with guys that are, that are crazy, crazy talented. You know what I mean? <laughs> the level of talent I'm sitting with right now, I'm just like, it's brilliant. Oh, oh, very, very much so, because you can easily tell that as well in this album. Again, it's due to the fact that you you don't always like not every song sounds the same. You go through many different influences on a couple of these songs as well. Like take a look at a song like um I think you brought up early was the first one that you did was with uh, the faceless because I remember listening to it and I thought that it was like kind of like had like this feeling of like a more modern take on something that Iron Maiden would have done, especially with the guitar progressions on the whole entire thing. I was like, dang was not expecting that, but this is awesome. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. That kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I listened to the initial demos, it sent me, like I, I was hearing, I, 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 I loved Maiden kind of Judas Priest growing up and, and some of those things. So, you know, honestly, some of the, some of that melody I was trying to capture within that is, 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 is a, is a shout out and a, and a homage, paying homage to, to, to some of those, that style specifically. Right. Uh, and, um, cause no, ain't nothing wrong with going back to that vibe. I mean, uh, Maiden is still selling out arenas right now. So I, but it, not to do that. It's just, this, I, I try to blend that style. So. Yeah. And it's also just blending because uh, you were influenced by that. So you're going to blend that influence in there. And you're going to give your own modern take on a more twist on it, but you're not going to try, you're not going to just have that sound and be that sound. It's like, okay, this is what I listened to when I was younger. This is what I listened to now still. Sure. And I want to take some of it because I understand some of the way that it's constructed and that how the progressions work with it. So want to see if I can mold what I want to do and just put a little bit of that in there. It's like, yeah, a little bit of a uh, like salt, like a little bit of like spray down a little bit, like yeah. Yeah. a little sprinkle. Yeah, just just a little sprinkle. But overall, like when I was going through the whole entire thing with with the center, what I because I always have a giant note sheet that I always uh, well, not print out, I just have it on a different screen. But what I looked at I was like overall when it comes to Kill Lights in the Center, what what I see is a band that's using their this newfound freedom that especially with you know you all all came from four different places. That, that you can explore everything you want to on this album because you can explore a more melodic metalcore sound on the opening track with Shed My Skin, that more modern take on that Iron Maiden feel with The Faceless, a rock ballad style that I really like with Tear Me Apart, and then also like a thrash meets metalcore mix with The Enemy. And then using you as the vocalist just allowed you guys to have this larger range to work with because you're perfectly able to play with that harder style, have those unclean vocals, but you can also work very well with more melodic sense with the clean vocals as well and mix them together. But when you really get in depth with these songs, you can see how each was constructed to maximize the emotion that you're trying to portray when you're talking about mental health. It really brought it out, especially when you dove deep into it. And a song like The Enemy, using that clean and unclean vocals at the same time, kind of to provide two different personalities within the song, I thought was a fantastic move in itself. Yeah, like I say, um, to me personally, I like the balance, the the clean vocal, the melody, the the harmonies, the, the mix of crap that puts it together, right? Like, as a listener too, as a listener, I, li I like to have, you know, my, my musical taste is super diverse too. So uh, I want something that keeps me engaged and keeps me interested. If I'm listening to the same, uh, hearing the same song, maybe the music's different, but if I'm hearing the same song in the same key, but they're singing through the whole thing, it just gets old to me. So, uh, you know, love it or hate it. That, that's, you know, I try to create as much diversity within each of the songs as possible and uh, keep it interesting, you know? Yeah, and if that's what if that's what you want to do, then that's definitely what you should be doing when you're making music. That's definitely what you should be doing on your records, just due to the fact that that's what you want to do. And if you want to do it, and that's what you feel most confident with, put it out there because then that's going to end up radiating on this album. It's going to radiate out towards the audience when they listen to it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's been the most excited I've been about a project or any music I think ever. But uh, beyond that, I've always wanted to be in a metal band. I've always wanted to be in a heavier band, um, and I've you know in in um in bands past i felt constrained by the music i was provided you know i think just i've just i've got more options with this just stylistically and room to to, to do the mix of things i i do so yeah it worked out awesome yeah, and then when it comes to one thing i one thing i did be was able to look at it this album and kind of tell especially going through it was there's definitely already a built-in trust between you and the other three guys when it comes to creating these songs, writing the song. So if someone has some crazy idea that they want to try, you guys are going to trust that person and be like, okay, let's see if we can make this work. Let's see if we can go and give this a shot just because you guys are able to do so many different things. So why not try it? And then if someone has an idea of like, okay, let's try and put something like this into a song. It's like, okay, in paper, that might not necessarily seem like it works, but 
being on paper and actually recording it and listening to it are two completely different things. So let's give it a shot because there's times where I've talked with bands it's like, yeah, they thought that it wasn't going to work out as well. But all of a sudden you put it, you record it, you listen to it. And all of a sudden you just see that it works out perfectly. Even though when you look at it on paper, it's like, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to work. You got to try it. Yeah. I mean, we had, um, I had a conversation with both Moose and Jordan on Tuesday, specifically around this, right? We had as a song idea we got going. I got a melody for it. And, uh, I said to them, I don't give a shit. I'm going to give this a go in this style. And uh, I'm not going to con- constrain myself to, to say I can't do that. And Because we did that in the first record. We, we said that to ourselves in the first record. Like, we do what you feel fits and that is it. Right? And we're going to do the same thing for the second. And uh, I, I don't give a shit what people think. <laughs> Hopefully they like it. Cool. I, you know, here's the thing. I, any, when you put yourself in a wheelhouse in a specific, and you say to yourself, I can only do this style right now um you, you kind of set yourself up right you've got no diversity with it now of course our next record's going to sound it's going to be very much along the same theme as what we're doing but just a melody here or there or a thing stylistically it's worth a try you know it's just to create on a creative level to mix it up so we've got about 25 songs written for the second record already so uh we're sitting pretty good you had 25 songs written already. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> and and this one just came out last month. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We have, yeah, we have 25, uh, I think about 17, 16, 17 of all the vocals on it already. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, and that's, we got a couple of writing sessions coming up. I mean, I guess ideally we'd like to have 30, 35 songs to, to, to be able to use and, you know, um, you know, things move a lot quicker these days too. So again, I'm uh, hoping by next summer we're, we're already working on uh, recording the next album. And what I'll say, one thing that definitely shows is, especially with how crazy of a time we're in in 2020, where yeah, there's real. I mean, I've I've seen a couple of bands play live since the whole, since middle of March, but it's all very very small shows. People separated out and everything because I went to one on the eighth and literally in the middle of I call the middle of bumfuck nowhere, Wisconsin, because it was about 40 miles west of Wasser, there maybe 50 people there What's, uh, what location was that? i think i played it i i have no idea it was it was like a it was actually like at a winery oh i geez. do not remember where it was but it was with um at least you had at least you had some wine i mean that like, that kills that kills you <laughs> i actually didn't have any wine due to the fact that i drove up from walks so was three and a half hour drive there s- saw all three bands play because i've interviewed two of them before with the band uh it's called relent and then the band the protest and okay. they're playing with Seventh Day Slumber. So I went up there, saw three bands, got to talk with the guys. And then after it was done, I'm like, okay, it's 945. I got to drive home still. So it's three and a half hours back. I didn't want to drink for any of that because yep. dri- driving with like the only light around there is your headlights. Y- yeah, oh, yeah, I wasn't going to risk any of that. But it's like, but again, it's like everyone's kind of separated. But what I was saying with that is like, that's the only kind of shows I've seen has been very minimal and very spaced out because of COVID concerns. However, there's a lot of other things that bands are going to have to do in order to kind of keep moving and make sure that this time isn't wasted. And with you guys, yeah, you put out a record already and now you're already starting to write stuff and work on something for the up for another one so that when things open up and you guys are able to start touring, all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, what about another album? We already got stuff ready to go for it. We're already working on it. So we're not wasting any time here. Yeah, it's going to be productive. Yeah, I mean, we've done a couple of live. We did a live stream session just after the album came out, which is pretty sweet. We've got another one coming up uh, specific uh, for, for Hot Topic um, that's going to be announced, um, which should be pretty cool, just uh, mixing it up there too. So, um, yeah, I mean, as much content as possible, right? Um, it, it's it's a crazy world right now. And, um, you know, we, we announced um, uh, March 2021, so we're doing some, some UK runs. Uh, UK run, um, which we're super excited about. Um, uh, just excited to get to meet some of the fans that have been kind of supporting us from, from the start, you know. And then uh, we got some more announcements around that that I can't talk about right now, which is going to be super cool. And then um, in addition to that, obviously we have down, Download Festival for 2021, which is like, I grew up in England, so Download was the the festival if you're gonna ever play a festival it's gonna be there um so it's a, to get scheduled for it last year and then the first time in like 30 years the one time i'm gonna play it is gonna get canceled it's like are you kidding me you know uh so 
dear lord please don't cancel the second time ever in 30 year history right now the second time because we're on it this time as well uh but no yeah just some of those opportunities that i'm just just uh you know my whole family are in england so i'm excited to play shows there and be there my my brother's gonna come on the road with us you know so just all those kind of things uh you know what's funny is i've been in in america 20 years plus and uh so i've done a ton of tours here but never toured england and now you're gonna get to tour england and you're gonna get to play a download fest so i'm okay with that's, that right that that that's incredible and yes lord please for the love of God, please do not allow 2021 shows to be canceled because we just want to go back to enjoying shows. Yeah, I mean, look, I think, you know, I think we all need to, it's been, it's been a very difficult year. I mean, you talk about whether it's politically, whether it's um, just, you know, dealing with some of the racial issues. I mean, you're, you're in Wisconsin, I'm in Minnesota. We've had a lot of struggles there too, just, you know, um, and, and then you talk about Corona too. These just such, such deep, difficult things that everybody's had to deal with right now that, you know, um, it's going to be nice, to, hopefully to get back specifically to the music side to a bit of sense of normal, you know, and, and get back to some of those things that uh, make, us, make us feel a bit better, you know? Yeah. And like you were talking about earlier with a lot of like with uh, the metal community kind of, there's always this togetherness that's there. And right now with everything that's going on, whether it's politically, whether it's the racial issues you're happening here in America, and it's with COVID as well, there is definitely a separation going on within people, whether it's from your political standpoint or with COVID as well, just because people are not getting together as much anymore, just due to safety concerns. It's once we want shows to come back because then we finally get that feeling of togetherness back again. And of course, those first shows, I mean, people are going to be just amped up to go to those shows. So you're going to see so much emotion. You're going to see, see so much just energy from these crowds as well. And I can attest to that because, well, I'll be one of those crazy guys in the crowd going like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. You know, and I think, uh, you know, if I have a message to anybody too, right, it's not it's not always the musicians that are struggling right now. It's more so the road crew. It's the, the venues. And so, you know, if you're not buying my CD, support your local venue. You know, there's a lot of crowdfunding going on. There's a lot of different things that, you know, people are in need right now, honestly. Right. And, and we need to say, we want to ensure that the music industry is there when we come back, you know? So, uh, you know, again, go buy somebody else's CD, support them as buy the merch, help them out. You know, there's a lot of different, uh, whether there's a local venue they're looking to do some crowdfunding to, you know, support that. Buy, buy tickets for next year. If you, you're probably going to get them refunded if you don't, if you can't use them. But like, I mean, again, it comes down to just supporting each other, right? I, I mean, I think, you know, we all rely on 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 the uh, the music scene and music in general for so much besides just the, the music, whether it's the sense of friendship, you know, all these different things that come with it. And uh, so, you know, support your scene. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fully 100 percent behind that as well, and well said because there have been things that I've been doing since the beginning of this. It's it's because I'm still working a full time job as well, but I've been consistently working because I'm able to work from home. So it's yeah, I still got money coming in. I'm not spending a lot of it. I'm saving a good amount, but it's like okay, so want to help support some of these bands. So when it comes to those two small shows, I was able to go to. Yeah, I went to them even though they're a couple hours away. Yeah, I still did. Um, I've actually been buying more merch than I probably normally should be, but. Hey, I'm helping out all these bands I absolutely love. And then when it comes to supporting the venues as well, I have seen some crowdfunding stuff. Probably the most interesting one I've seen is, again, here in Milwaukee with the Rave, where through over 30 years, they had so many different tour posters that they had all the artists sign. So what they did was they put them up on they put them up on it with eBay to put them up for auction so people could bid on them. And then all the proceeds go to help the Rave. And I bid on two of them. One of them I've completely forgot about and I didn't win, but I wanted that one because I went to that show and it was awesome. Then the second one, I'm like, well, it's my favorite band. So let's see if we can try and get it. And it's hanging up on my wall right now. So nice. Nice. I was uh, uh, reminiscing on my first ever show the other day. And uh, it was in fact in, so it was in Nottingham, England. It was Corn touring, I believe, on Life is Peachy with Incubus, uh, who were touring on Fungus and Mungus directly supporting them oh my god it was, it, was, it was when brandon boyd had dreads and yeah it, so i was telling stories i think it was about 14 15 and uh my hometown is an hour away on the train so i stowed away on a train in the bathroom for an hour didn't pay the ticket <laughs> got there and then you know kind of waited in the line i don't think we had tickets so we scalped tickets uh managed to get in 
amazing show. I obviously had no game plan after the fact too. So I had one long sleeve thin uh, corn t-shirt. I threw my other t-shirt away, but I'd forgotten to, it was like 30 degrees out. So I'd sweated through that. And then we had to get the train back. So I had no jacket. And then we, we missed the train home at like two in the morning. So I had to sleep in the train depot for like four hours and then, and then sneak back on a train back. So I just thought it was kind of a cool, kind of cool shit that you do when you're a kid uh, illegally there. So don't, don't go on trains and pay for a ticket, but, um, but no, to have corn and then with Incubus opening, uh, you know, pretty amazing. I always like to hear people's stories about first shows. Second show was white zombie. I ever went to. I think I think my first one I ever went to was I think it was shoot, who was it? It was either Foreigner or Aerosmith. I don't oh, really nice. remember, but the one I remember that I always think of like as my like own first one because that was the one I went to for the first time without like my parents or anything or like the music that I really wanted to go see was at Summerfest here in Milwaukee back in 2011 because it was the first one I was going to get to see Rise Against and I was like that's oh, my nice. favorite band so I was all in on it and I still remember because it's third of July. All of a sudden, a ba- like there was an Irish punk band that played before him and then turned around right after the Irish punk, punk band was done because the lakefront fireworks were going on and everyone's watching, everyone's going crazy. Right when the big finale ends, all of a sudden, uh, you start hearing the the, the first, uh, like that first guitar string from uh, Chamber in the Cartridge. And I'm just like, <gasps> and I just remember we almost like just going crazy because I got the benches out there, which still makes no sense. Last year, we tried tipping up the benches during August Burns Red so we can mosh more, but uh. Security wasn't a big fan of that. I, <laughs> but when it comes down to it, it's just there's so many stories that we have from so many different live shows. Whether it's your initial story with Corn and Incubus sneaking on a train, yep. <laughs> trying yep. to get in for as much as you could for free. All these other stories that I have as well, from getting hurt to almost breaking my nose to um, basically finding out what Gwar was all about for the first time and just going home looking like I just was an extra from The Walking Dead. Like I still like all of these. I love all these stories, but and I want to get back to those because it's, I love telling them and it just reminds me of being so happy no matter what. It's no matter what, when I leave a show, I'm always in this great euphoric mood. So we got to get back to that, man. Yep. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. And I, I mean, I'm ready for it as well, just because, man, I just want to, I want to get into a mosh pit again. I, my, my, uh, my boss, my full-time job after about three months of, you know, of the whole entire shutdown basically told me that, uh, it was weird because I had been to a mosh pit and that uh, my body was trying to hurt itself because I got my uh, my appendix almost burst, so I had to get it removed. And he was like, yeah, it's because you haven't been to a mosh pit in like two, three months. Probably, so uh, Probably yeah. You're, you're imploding from the inside out now. Yeah, instead, instead, instead of people smashing into me, it's my body's trying to smash into itself. So There you go. Yippee. <laughs> well, Artie, James, I know you got a time limit. We're right about to reach that. So I'm going to let you uh, give any kind of closing remarks that you want, and then we'll take it from there, and we'll close this one out really nicely. No, I mean, hey, I just, uh, just appreciate uh, everybody's support right now. It's been amazing so far uh, as we get back to 2021, and hopefully some uh, some touring options will be out and about. I know that's going to be a game plan for us, specifically in the U.S., so I uh, can't wait to meet people, hang out, drink a beverage, high five, all that good stuff. I'm I'm over the I'm over this or none of this. I'm more of a high five guy. So hopefully we can get back to that, right? Very much so. And then for everyone that's listening, when it comes to Kill the Lights, where you if you need to find anything on them, when it comes to where to follow them online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, their YouTube channel, whatever it might be. Um, their website where you can buy their merch, you can stream their music. Please take a look at the description of the podcast episode or the YouTube video because it's all going to be there, one-stop shop for you guys. So we're going to make it as easy as possible to make sure that you are able to listen to the center, get in the know with Killer Lights, and really dive deep in the music and make sure you follow them because once 21, once not, I said 21, 2021 comes around and the tour dates are coming out and they're able to start going out on the road and you want to know when they're going to be coming near you, you're going to want to be following them. So I'm making it as easy as possible for you. You got no excuse not to follow these guys or listen to their music. It's all right there for you. We And we try and stay pretty engaged, to be honest. We kind of, you know, we overlook a lot of the uh, social media stuff too. So uh, if you hop on there, there's a ton of engagement. There's a lot of great conversations going on, a lot of funny banter. So we're all about that. And that's real. always and that's always good too because it always just allows you to connect with the fans on another, just in a whole nother realm as well. And a more of a casual realm in a way my my favorite my favorite comments so far and uh, you know <laughs> not to be too serious but it's always funny when you you see somebody that's listened to one clip of one song and uh 
my favorite, I think a couple favorites so far have been where it's like, this shit sounds like fucking Nickelback. I'm like, clearly, clearly you have not listened to even one song. You have listened to seven seconds. So, no, there's nothing wrong with Nickelback. They got a lot of shit, but I'm just, I just think it's great, right? It's like, clearly you didn't listen to a song. That's great. Appreciate yeah, the feedback. Like- don't listen to a clip actually listen to the song and you know come up with an idea for yourself instead of just maybe what somebody else told you to say my, my feedback to that was uh holy shit nickelback's way too heavy for us so. oh yeah i did see when you said that i actually got a good laugh out of that one <laughs> that was good all righty well james thank you so much for being on the podcast this is incredible and when you guys start touring again couple of things. One, I really, really hope that you have a Wisconsin day planned or uh, like a Minnesota date or a Chicago date because hell, I'll drive up to Minnesota for that. Are you kidding me? Then I get to see my friends too. So, woo. And then also, because I know you said like, you know, we want to hang out. People say hi to them, give them high fives. Definitely will give you a high five. And if you like beer or you like, you like any kind of that stuff, first round's on me. Perfect. I'll remind you of that though. Oh, oh! I've I've been saying that to a good amount of bands, and I've kind of like started keeping a list of like, okay, who's who do I yeah. have? Who do I owe the first round to? I've got a list of like five or six right now, and you're gonna be number seven. Perfect, seven, good number. Yep, seven. It's it's that it's that uh that perf that nice number. I mean, I think it's actually the, my it's my lucky number. So I used to race motorcycles when I was a kid, and I used to race number seven. See, no, oh, perfect. Number. Inside Woo! scoop, you good? I you know that is definitely gonna happen. All right, James, thank you very much for being on the podcast and. Because I never like to end these with a goodbye due to the fact that that means it kind of like, oh, this is going to be the last time ever. Hell no, because I'd love to talk to you again on the podcast sometime in the future and also get to meet you in person at a live show and basically go as all go hell crazy like at one of your shows because that's normally what I do. I'm not going to with a goodbye. I'm just going to end it with a uh, see you later. Peace. Well, 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 folks, that's my interview with James Clark of the band Kill the Lights. The Sinner came out on August 21st, so please, please, please go listen to it if you haven't. And I do always say that, you know, these episodes are incredible. These episodes are amazing. I love doing these. And this is no exception. This one was awesome as we got to go in depth with some of the things. We got to go a little bit more in depth with a little more of the emotional stuff. Talk about, you know, getting back to live shows, all that kind of good stuff. So when Killer Lights is able to start touring, hopefully 2021 here in the United States, or if you're across the pond over in England, I mean, they already got dates booked for 2021. Please, please, please make sure to go out and support them and... Just enjoy because this is insane. And then remember when I said that he was like number seven on my list for the uh, first rounds on me list? I'm not kidding. He is number seven. And please excuse my handwriting because I know you're probably be like, oh my God, you don't have clean handwriting. Well, nah. But this was awesome. And yes, James, first rounds on me. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. That was Kill the Lights. James Clark on the Core Progression Podcast. Part time SOTD rocks. We're rocking Metal Thrive. So please follow them. All the links are in the description for the video and for the podcast. Please make sure you're subscribed to the podcast, Spotify, the podcast, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. And subscribe to their YouTube channel as well due to the fact that, that you can watch the interviews as well. So please make sure you're doing that. And that's going to be for me today, guys. My name is Kevin. This is the Core Progression Podcast brought to you by MSOTD. Rocks are rocking Metal Thrive. And you guys know how I end every single one of these episodes with a big, healthy, and hearty See. Yeah. Yeah.